Hello and welcome to Cricket Mania. The third test begins in Southampton on Sunday, the 27th. Uh, we are uh, we are coming on the heels of a uh, victory. The big question is: Is this the time to take risks, or should one stick to time-tested strategy? Not a very long time. The more specific question we are asking is: Should India retain a five-bowler attack in the coming test? And all the related questions. Joining us uh, uh, will be Abhishek Dubey. And uh, cricketer Milind Rege, and with me, of course, my anchor and co-anchor, rather, uh, Ayaz Mehman. Ayaz, uh, thank you for uh, pointing this very interesting subject out. But the issue of five bowlers uh, yeah. being used in an attack form was being discussed even before the first match. Yes, in fact, they went in with a. And they went in with it. They, they decided that okay, we will go with it. And the question now is, will they have the guts to retain? Yeah. So what's happened is we are one ahead in the series. We are one zero up after two mm. Test matches. Uh, Stuart Binney hasn't bowled much. Mm. So while he played as an all rounder, mm. he's essentially been used as a batsman. The bowling skills have either been found wanting mm. or have not been kind of you know exploited enough. Whatever be the case. Now mm. that you're one up, there's mm. some. The reports are coming in right. that Rohit Sharma might play uh, as a specialist batsman, which means mm. then you get back to being restricted to four frontline bowlers, mm. and the fifth option is well, if you want to go back to Virat Kohli, that's a different option altogether. Right, and there's some very interesting points about the pitch itself, right, which has not been very kind to India, though India won there. I mean, there there, there seems to be some fear lurking around the pitch, particularly from 2002. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment, Ayaz. Uh, we also asked uh, a bunch of uh, folks uh, in and around uh, the city what they thought of this uh, strategy of a five bowler attack and should that be retained. I think the, they should uh, retain five bowler attacks because uh, there are a lot of batsmen in our team and even bowlers are performing. I mean, uh, they are batting. So, uh, if we keep five bowlers, uh, We'll get an extra bowler at a time. I think we should change the pattern to more of bowlers because uh, this uh, bat uh, bowler who just did very fine. What's his name? Ishan. Uh, that he did very fine. So we, sh we should give chances to more of bowlers. I think they should uh, retain five bowler attack because uh, that is beneficial for India uh, because our bowlers are batting really well and uh, we get an extra bowler. So and we can take England uh, wickets easily. Right now it is that we are winning, but maybe in future if we don't, so we should. Uh, I guess we should retain the five bowler attack. I mean, playing safe is we already have Bhuvneshwar Kumar who's batting so well, so we don't need an extra batsman. Play same because uh, MS likes to play the team and he's comfortable with the present team. That's why. I think we should retain the five bowlers attack because England have batsmen who can last for a long time. So supposing Joe Root, he can play long innings, and if you don't have a fifth proper bowler, then it's trouble for you. Because four bowlers cannot bowl the entire day. They must go with the same combination because this is the winning combination. They must not change it. Okay, winning combination. <laughs> they must not change. What do you think, Ayaz? Well, I don't know if the winning combination needs to be retained, but the winning composition hmm. perhaps is the is the right uh, you know approach. Hmm. I would think. Mm -hmm. Look at what's happened in the first two test matches. Hmm. A bulk, a lot of the runs, apart from what Murli Vijay and Ajinkya Rane have done at the top of the order, hmm. have actually come from batsmen hmm. six and below. Bhuvneshwar right. Kumar has got three half centuries. Mohammad Shami has got a half century. Jadeja has played a game-changing knock. Hmm. Dhoni himself has got a half century. Stuart Binney got a half century somewhere. Hmm. So the Indian. Bowlers mm. are no mean or no mugs with bats. Mm. That's been proved in this series. Mm. I think also mm. this is an opportune time. England are very vulnerable. They're in turmoil. They are in fact in you know all on the verge of dissipating as a team. Okay. Because there are so many questions being asked of the captain right. and, now. And, and I'm going to go to Milind in a moment. Yes. But what do you think about the uh, what do you think about the pitch? Uh, any history of this pitch that we should be looking at? There's some uh, you know conflicting opinion coming about what this pitch mm. is going to be like. A lot of people think it's going to be a seeming track, which is what. Mm. might suit England more. Right. However, the sun is out. Mm. It's if it if it's warm and sunny there and the pitch mm -hmm. kind of is dry, mm. then obviously it's going to help the slow bowlers a little more. Right. So and and I and I read that only uh, there are only two people from the 2002 team who are pr uh, now going to be present at this pitch in Southampton, which is uh, Dravid and Ganguly, and both are commentators. Yes, absolutely. Right? So they're, they're, no, they're off the playing <laughs> arena. <laughs> there's no memory of what what that pitch can do and, and the threat that it poses. Uh, Milind, what's your sense? Uh, should India retain this five bowler attack? I've always been an advocate of a five bowler attack uh, in test cricket, come what may. Except in the first test match, where you need to gauge the opponent's strength, etc. Because if you are a test down, then suddenly you start becoming defensive. And now that uh, India has uh, won the first test match, I have no doubt in my mind 
that they should start attacking because England is a vulnerable team. I am not one of those who wants a four-man pace attack because it doesn't make sense at all unless you're an Englishman and unless you're an English team which doesn't have a spinner really. Uh, what I have said is that Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, Jadeja, all these guys have done well as batsmen. They can score their 30s or 40s and, and at that low number they can. So adding an, and, and everything depends on what Dhoni wants. Uh, some Somewhere along the line, I get an impression that perhaps Dhoni doesn't want or is not happy to bat at number six. But that doesn't mean that you take uh, a pure batsman at number six because then you start becoming defensive. Four bowler attack uh, theory is not for me. I would go in for uh, a five b- pure bowlers and if possible a spinner because as the third and the fourth and the fifth day go on, the wicket does start getting, uh, you know, brownish as you saw from the wicket slots. So how would you describe the strategy then? Is it being safe or uh, is it being consistent, uh, Milib? No, on the contrary, when you have a five bowler theory, you are attacking more because you need the wickets. No, what I I mean, is, is this being consistent in, in approach as an overall theme or is it being safe? I mean, that's what I, that, that was my question. No, but you know, I'll tell you what, I, I'm not yet able to understand Dhoni's theories or Dhoni's tactics because many a time he's used a, a player in the team or taken a player in the team and not used him at all. I, for one, would like every single player in the 11 to be utilized. So I'm not able to understand what Dhoni's tactics are going to be. But no, it's not defensive at all. Absolutely not. Right. Okay. Uh, Abhishek, uh, uh, what's your sort of uh, opening uh, uh, strike on this one? Uh, how should India be playing this and should they continue with the five bowler attack? Uh, see, it's a very, very uh, catch-22 uh, situation for India, as you can see. Uh, India has won the match and lost. Uh, but Still, there are three more matches to be played in the series, and so you can't put your curtains down and say ki, uh, we will play uh, one more batsman and let's be defensive for the uh, third test match so that India is able to win that series in this case. Here, three matches are left, so you need to be open-ended. The attack uh, uh, should be uh, persistent. Uh, and the second thing is that ki, always a, a team tends to go with the winning combination. But I feel, uh, as far as first two test matches are concerned, the place of Roger, uh, the place of winning is, uh, is questionable as a fifth bowler or as a uh, fifth or all rounder, you can say. And the team uh, news which we are getting from there, as I asked, uh, said right now, is that Rohit Sharma is likely to play uh, this test match if we go by the net session and the uh, news and meeting from there, there anything suggests. The second uh, worry for India is the opening slot as to whether Team India will persist with Shikhar Dhawan, who has not been able to impress. Uh, in the first two test matches, or they are going to give Gautam Gambhir a chance. So these are the two major uh, uh, worries for India ahead of the test match. And I feel the India will go with one more batsman as the trend suggests from there. So uh, let's for a moment uh, switch it around and look at it from the English side. There's been a small change in guard. Joss Butler has been included uh, on the English uh, team. Uh, Milind, do you want to start off? I mean, so we've talked about the five bowlers on our side and the attack, uh, the likelihood of uh, this strategy being retained or perhaps not. But what's it going to be from the other side? I think at the moment England is a, a, a team with very low morale. Their captain is not scoring. And here is where, you know, India needs to attack now. They are one up in the series. Uh, just don't be happy with that one up because if you win this test match, then more or less the series may be settled. Uh, I would definitely think that uh, England is not the kind of team that uh, one has seen over the past few years. It's a demoralized team. The captain is not doing well. He's losing test matches, hasn't won a match for maybe 10 or 12 test matches as of now. And, and get into them, get stuck into them and, you know, attack them. That's what I would, uh, I would definitely do. Now, I, I don't think England bowling attack except for maybe abroad. Because when you saw Anderson bowling and the amount of balls that he kept consistently bowling outside the off stump, uh, I'm surprised that their bowling coach or their head coach is not asking him to attack the batsman. So England at the moment is a demoralized side. I don't think uh, they, are, they are one to give us a fight. But you never know the wickets in England. Things are difficult with the cloud cover comes in. And uh, maybe, maybe, or, or, you know, if in India fails. But there's still a lot of batting in Indian team. As you have seen that the lower order has helped them. A 250 run uh, target is a good enough target in England at, with this English batting. So, uh, a couple of points here. One is, of course, breaking news in case if people want to know. One is that Ravinder Jadeja has been fined 50% of Correct. the match fee. Yes. That's happened uh, with the ICC yeah, hearing yeah. that took place, Judicial yeah. Commission. Anderson's hearing is on August 1, which mm. means obviously he's also going to play the third test match and he's their spearhead. He's been bowling quite superbly. Mm. So, he's going to be there. I think it's going to be a 
tough match in the sense that England want to claw back into the series. As Millen mentioned, they are very vulnerable now. Mm. But we must not forget mm. that in 2012 when they came to India, mm -hmm. they were licked at Ahmedabad in the first test match. Mm. But they won at Mumbai, mm. they won at Kolkata, mm. they won the series mm. and really left us quite humiliated and disgraced losing mm. at home. Mm. So, there is a tendency or mm. can be amongst sports teams and mm. sports persons mm. to, to feel a little too elated and say we won a test match, major match, winning it at Lord's great amount of legacy and history there mm. and feel very content. Mm. But if you become casual about your, you know, it's a long series, it's a five test series. Right. There are three more tests to go, so you right. can't afford to. So, and it's the first five test series in 12 years. In 12 years. Yeah. The five test series has mm. never been played in England. Yeah. Okay, you're, so you're saying we, we're, we're, okay, in, and India hasn't played India one hasn't, in 12 years India either. India hasn't played a and five not, test and, series in and England definitely ever. not in England. Definitely oh. not. So, you need that, you know, long period of concentration, hmm. commitment, passion, hmm. stamina and all that goes with it, hmm. you know, retention of interest and hmm. skill. Hmm. These are all easy terms to use but they are hard because right. it's almost a month and a half more to go before the series is over. Hmm. And remember England are playing at and, home. And how does that mesh in with the subject that we are discussing today uh, in terms of the f sort of consistent five bowler attack so I, approach? I, therefore, I want to kind of uh, accentuate what Milind said that if you are one up now hmm. and if you become two up, hmm. then you have almost sealed, you know, hmm. uh, driven the, the last yeah. nail in the coffin there hmm. or at least the second last. Hmm. You still have to win one more. Mm. To, to seal the thing or hold on to the lead. Mm. But if you are content mm. at being 1-0 up and say now I can try and draw the matches and I will go home winners, mm. you might, it might boomerang, it might blow up okay. in your face. Right. So, I think the theme that is coming through from at least you and uh, Milind is that be, ag be aggressive or retain your aggression. Yes, right? because and don't give up your aggression. You know, and strike with the iron. Is, I mean, the yeah. English team is very vulnerable. Yeah. Your guys are in form. The bowlers mm. have done well. Bhubaneswar mm. and Nishant mm. have done splendidly. Mm. Shami has been a little bit of a disappointment. Jadeja is done, he's been economical hmm. and I think on at Southampton, if right. the sun is out, if hmm. Ashwin comes in, hmm. you've got three fast bowlers, two, right. two spinners, it's right. so a very balanced attack. Right. Okay. So, uh, Abhishek, uh, the question back on the English team side. So, right. So, we've, uh, we've lined up the deck as far as the Indian team is concerned. We've said that uh, the Indian team, of course, uh, I mean, may retain the five bowler attack. Uh, it's in good shape. Uh, it, it should be feeling confident. The English morale seems to be low. Uh, there are some question marks about the pitch and the weather and the climate and so on, but that could be uh, uh, surmounted depending on the situation. But having said all of that, how should we be assessing the English side uh, for the next match? Take this series very positively because see, uh, the, the main thing is that we, we have been telling since last two years that Indian team is in the transition mode. And many nuts and bolts have to be uh, fitted. It's not a perfect team. Uh, and as uh, Ayaz rightly said, uh, uh, in, the, in the last series, we, what we saw was that India was um, uh, India defeated England in the Ahmedabad Test match. And, and we, in the two subs subsequent ma matches, England, uh, uh, what you can, they counterattacked and they defeated India. Uh, so, but the, the major concern should be, as far as Indian team is concerned, as, as, as I said, the opening sl uh, slot. Because in the in the two matches, Murli Vijay has tried. He can't be striving like this in every other match. So you need support from the other opening side also. And Shikhar Dhawan is not very comfortable in that position. So Indian team management needs to sort this out as to whether Shikhar Dhawan uh, uh, should be persisted for the next team matches or the time has come when they should bring in experience Gautam Gambhir, uh, who was there, uh, there in the last series as well. And the second thing, uh, as far as, as Bindi is concerned, you can see uh, what purpose is there, uh, it has served the uh, Indian team. Uh, it's uh, right Indian team should uh, be in the attacking mode in the next three matches as well and they should not put the curtains down. But what we need to see is that uh, how effective has been Binni in the Indian scheme of things. You see the number of overs uh, which he has uh, bowled or, or the uh, runs which he has made. It would, uh, would it not have been better if you want to uh, put attack in the uh, English order. Why don't you bring Ashwin in, in, place, of, uh, 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 in place of Binni? So these things need to be uh, fixed up. But I feel, as, as far as team Dhoni's uh, working uh, uh, methodology is concerned, he will go with uh, the same opening slot and he may bring in uh, Rohit Sharma in place of uh, Binni tomorrow. Uh, <coughs> yeah, tomorrow. Uh, I mean, I think that's a very sort of useful and sound uh, uh, ground-based uh, observation and something that we should keep in uh, uh, keep in mind as we go into the next match. 
But if you were to take a step back again, uh, Ayaz, uh, you know, we're, well, let, let's come back to the larger themes. The larger themes are: is the is the Indian Test match? Uh, I mean, in the, is the Indian Test side uh, uh, ready for uh, victory? Right? In in the sense that you know. And if you take a step further back, we were, you know, when we were talking about, you know, how is Dhoni himself positioned for this entire uh, match and series, and and how is that adding up? I mean, is that is that team still holding? Is uh, are we still confident of Dhoni's ability to hold, uh, you know, the strategy and the the aggression right through? So I'll answer the first part yeah. first because I'll see the f five bowler attack as a subset of this rather than as the as the yeah, you know yeah. the. Whether is the, is the Indian team ready for victory? I think it's a very interesting and important question because I think when we landed there, there was a baggage we were carrying that we lost 0-4 the last exactly, time we were in yeah, England. Yeah. And in those days, we had Tendulkar, Dravid, Lakshman, hmm. Yuvraj, hmm. Harbhajan Singh, Zaheer Khan and Gambhir and Sehwag. I mean, hmm. you know, that was a, yeah. like a front, li front line team. Hmm. I think what I've seen in the first two test matches of this team is I've seen a lot of resilience. Mm. There were many stages in both test matches, certainly in the second, mm. where India were actually in a hole mm. and they were pulled out of a crisis. We mm. all remember Ishan Sharma's bowling, but we forget what Ajinkya Rane did on the first day of the match. Mm. Had he not hit that counter attack attacking 100, mm. we would never have been in a position to even you know save that match at all. Then there was Murli Vijay, the way he batted with a lot of gumption and technique and concentration. Then there was Bhuvneshwar Kumar picking up six wickets in those conditions where Anderson and Gang were supposed to pick up much, far more wickets. And then there was Jadeja who came in and then finally Ishan Sharma. So everyone is firing on all cylinders. And yeah. I, what I've liked about Dhoni, now to mm. come to Dhoni, mm. now, you know he's a bit quirky in his captaincy. Mm. Uh, as, Millen yeah. as Millen highlighted mm. and sometimes you really can't fathom mm. how he's thinking and what he's doing. Mm. What I've liked about him is mm. that he has taken he has taken the gauntlet, he's thrown the gauntlet at himself mm. and he's batting at number 6. Mm. As captain of the team, mm. he could very well choose to bat at number 7, protect himself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Number 6 is virtually a specialist batsman's position. Right. He has decided mm. in the first two tests to bat number 6, pack the side with an extra bowler mm. or an all-rounder like Stuart Binney, mm. which shows at least to me mm. intent to win, try and win. Mm. His methods, you may agree or disagree. Mm. And so far, he succeeded. Right. If he now goes back to batting at number 7, mm. then I would say that it is suggest he's showing a defensive hand rather than an aggressive hand, which is what he should be doing now. Right. So, uh, Milet, let me put the, the same theme to you. What's the, the, the larger theme that we are hoping will hold and sustain the Indian team through this series, particularly in the context of MS Dhoni and our expectations of him as we went into this series? When you look back upon Dhoni's captaincy, he doesn't seem to change a team very often. He goes by a winning combination. He doesn't make changes. He might make a change at all, if at all, in the third or the fourth test match. Uh, also, we've got to remember that this is a five-test series, and Ishan Sharma and Shami and Bhuvanesh Kumar by the fourth test match are going to be burnt out. So you need five bowlers because you know these two spinners can take the brunt of the attack during the fourth or the fifth day as and when they feel. Now, look at Dhoni, like, like Aya said, uh, Dhoni is the kind of person who will accept the challenge now that he's one up. And, and I do agree with uh, Aya that he should continue to bat at number six because if he goes in at number seven, he's going to send a message to the English team that he's becoming defensive, that he's having too many batsmen in the side to score so many runs. If you look at your batting order, one, two, three, and five have scored the runs. Even if Shikhar Dhawan hasn't scored a big this thing, he's, he's stroked his way to 20s and 30s. Pujara has stood there for long uh, hours as, uh, as, uh, you know, as vigil on the, on the wicket. So our batting is in good hands. So I, I don't think there is a need to, because now the time has come to really cash in, you know, you know what shall we say, tie the noose around the English batting and, you know, bowl well. We are a brilliant fielding side. England team at the moment, I think, is the weakest team in the last many, many years that I've seen. There are none of their batsmen inspired. There's no flair in this team. And with uh, Ian Bell not doing well and Cook absolutely struggling, the others are not match-winning batsmen at all on wickets, which can help. But then everything in this game in England depends on the wickets that are being provided. But I'll tell you one thing. England is going to be very, very careful when they give you green wickets because they don't have the batting firepower to sustain our swing bowling. And in England, I'm going to come back to this whole age-old theory that Swing bowling at the at, at the speed of 130, 132 is more dangerous than 145 kilometers an hour. Nobody these days is afraid of fast bowling. And with the way Murli Vijay has batted, he seems to have 
taken a complete control of how to open a batting, you know, open the batting. He seems to be leaving more balls outside, outside the off stump, tire out the bowlers, play a whole day, play for one and a half days Indian batting. And that's the kind of theory we have. I think at the moment the Indian team looks a very good, solid balance side with an additional bowler in this team. I think we will do well. Uh, thanks for that, Milan. So, uh, uh, we take a sort of uh, detour for a moment. We also asked a few questions to some of the young people uh, we were talking to earlier about the current test series and uh, look at the questions and the answers. You might find it interesting. I think it's Jadia. Uh, Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli? Ashwin. Jaddu. Sir. Jadeja. Jaggu. Rockstar. Sir, Ravindra Jadeja. Uh, seven for something. He picked up seven wickets somewhere in India only. It's seven for around 50, 60 something. I, I know the second inning score. It's uh, seven for 50. Seven. Five. Seven. Seven wickets. Right, that, actually it's a fairly uh, fairly smart bunch. Yeah, I think smart they, even, bunch even the strategy, yeah. they were very clear about what they wanted uh, yeah. the Indian team to do in terms of bowling attack. The future so. of Indian cricket is secure. Everybody is going At to follow. At least those who know <laughs> cricket, uh, the future of those who know and watch cricket yeah. is secure. Okay, good. So, Ayaz, uh, we're coming to the end of the show. So, we also have our quiz question and Ayaz is going to ask a question and the right answers will win uh, vouchers for Flipkart. And uh, to uh, win those uh, uh, vouchers, you'll have to, and with your answers, you'll have to connect to us at, at Boom News TV. Okay, Ayaz, what's your question? So, who's the only Indian batsman to have hit a tri test triple century? Okay, so who's the only Indian to have hit a test triple century? That's the question. Uh, the right answers will get flip card vouchers. Or some of the right and answers. And it is not Sachin Tendulkar. <laughs> okay, it's not Sachin Tendulkar. <laughs> and uh, uh, send us your answers to at Boom News TV and uh, uh, on, on Twitter. And uh, that's all we have time for. We've completely run out of time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Milin, and thank you very much, Abhishek and, uh, uh, and Ayaz. Hopefully, we'll uh, look forward to a very, very interesting five-bowler attack at Southampton and uh, all the best to the teams. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you.